Okay, I got another quick video today. As I'm getting ready for these Seosin shows coming up, I'm just kind of like reworking some of the gear that I'm using. I'm gonna be using these Ernie Ball straps. You, in the past, I've always used like the, uh, the clip locks, but since I've mainly been in the studio for so long, I took all the clip locks off my guitars because I just got sick of the clip dangling everywhere and, and trying to play it. And it was just kind of an irritant. And sometimes you could hear it coming through the guitar. So anyways, I took all those off and then I saw that they made these clips. So I've been trying them, seeing if I think they would work. And I think they will. So I'm gonna use them on this tour coming up. And in doing so, I had to attach my wirelesses to the straps. And when I was, I was on a FaceTime call with a friend and he was like, man, I've never seen anybody do it like that. And it just kind of, it surprised me. So I'm gonna show you the way that I attach my wireless transmitters to the straps in a way that they don't fall off and a way that I've kind of seen a lot of the pro guitar techs attach them uh, in all kind of like the bigger bands. Obviously there's other ways of doing it and there's more expensive ways, but this seems to be the best way that gives you access to your wireless unit as well as creating a very consistent method across all of your straps, especially if you have multiple guitars. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is measure all of your straps. So I have three guitars that I'll be taking and I have three straps, one of them, one of them is already done. So I've gone through and measured each strap to be exactly the same. This is important for me because I use three of the same guitar. So I'm obviously using my Balaguer signature guitar. And when I switch from guitar to guitar, having your strap be an inch up or down can sometimes be a little irritating or feel a little bit weird. So I like to have all my straps the exact same length. Also, when you're done taking your straps off your guitar at the end of the night, or if you leave them in the case, whatever, it doesn't matter if the straps get mixed up because they'll always be the same for every guitar, the same length, which is great. So. Once you're done getting all your straps measured, you're kind of going to want to figure out where you want your transmitter to be. So the way this is going to end up is going to be somewhere, for me, this is about how much space I have to work with from the clip or the, whatever you would call this, the adjustment. I normally like to position that up here somewhere. I like to position the wireless unit right around here. And the reason is because if you put it on the other side, I found it can kind of push the unit down or, or it can kind of, if you put it up here, sometimes it can make this slide, at least on the clip lock straps that I was using. So we'll, we'll see how that goes with these. So first thing you're gonna wanna do, at least with the Sennheiser units, I'm pretty sure the Shure units have these too, is you're gonna wanna take this metal clip out. Now, sometimes you can get it out with your fingers just by kind of maneuvering it back and forth like this as it kind of twists out. This one looks like it's gonna pop out. Almost there. And it's only about a quarter inch or so. So now if you can see one side of this clip is out. It's not attached to the unit. Then what you'll do is you'll put your pack, I like to put mine upside down and you'll slide that unit along the back side of the strap. So that it then looks like this. Then you'll put this pin, like the clippy part, put that back in the unit Okay, and then from the back, it should look something like this. So as you hold your strap, it'll look like that. And it's pretty much attached to your strap at that point. Although I wouldn't play with it like this because I've had these slide. So then your next step, so you'll take some gaff tape, uh, maybe about, I don't know, what is this, six, seven inches or so. Tear off a piece. Tara, uh, maybe split this in half. 
Save one side. Now here's where it kind of becomes important of where you go. So on these units, you can see that the battery box happens from the side and it opens this way. So I'll tape around the top of the unit here, which is going to be facing the floor. But you'll start at the top, go all the way around the back of it. Like this. Nice and tight. And that's kind of like one layer. So I'll do a couple of these all the way down to the battery box. Around the back. And then you have that. So now that is nice and tight around the unit. Now, if you want to go buck wild, I have done in the past, again, I think it's because with the, the clip locks, they were a little more uh, like slippery. So I'd find I would get a little more slip out of them. But what you can do is if you're really worried about it sliding, you can go all the way up to your battery box where the battery box door is and line it up with that line and then give it another wrap right around there. And then you'll have to cut it once it gets up to the other door. Because the main thing is that you don't want it blocking your battery door access. And that to me is what makes this method superior to some of the kind of like neoprene pouches that you might see. Whereas with this, if this is on my guitar or on my person, it's totally attached and it's not going anywhere. And I can easily still have access to the door to turn it on and off or to mute it or change channels, whatever I have to do. And it's on there. So now that this is attached, let's kind of go to the next section, which is figuring out exactly how far your, how much slack you want in your um, cable going to your guitar. So for me, I mean, I'm not gonna get out my guitar right now, but basically as this goes on to the kind of like butt end of your guitar, as it's hanging like this, right? Around kind of like the backside of you, you'll notice this is like too much slack. And if this is plugged into your guitar, this is going to be jiggling around everywhere and potentially catching on someone else's guitar or a drum set or whatever, or your singer. And that's not good. So you want to tidy this all up and have it kind of one unit until it reaches the bottom here. And then it can go directly to your input jack. So you can do this any way you want, but I've measured this one. I've measured this one already. And I'm not going to walk you through this process because this is like straight up enough, but you can see how it ends up at the end here. So what I did is I pulled it through and I measured exactly how long I need this to where it lines up with my guitar to the input jack, tape it around there. And then I do a little coil to kind of eat up the rest of the slack. And then once you're done attaching everything, you'll end up with a nice tidy wireless unit that is tight on here and not too much slack hanging out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and hopefully you found it useful and I will see you in the next one.